Right, some breaking, not so breaking, but new news um, from The Guardian in particular. Jeremy Ngakia will not finish the season. Now, whether we thought he was going to stay or not, that's not necessarily the news as such. The news is that if it, nearly everybody was expected perhaps to remain and uh, be up for another month, Sanchez and Sabalata, for example, are both expected to stay here for another month. So checks loan is supposed to be another month. But Jeremy Ngakia is not staying for another month. And on the end of June, he will depart Gonzo. Yeah, um, it's, it's disappointing news, actually. It's not, not totally surprising, but it's it's disappointing news. I mean, we know he was going to leave anyway. He'd instructed his agent to find him another club. Um, the, the backstory is the club offered him scholarship about 12 months ago, which is just a continuation of the, the money he was on, which is in the hundreds of pounds. Um, they offered tried to offer him it again. It's too little money. He broke into the first team and they offered him the money, that which we know which has, uh, has been made public. Um which was five grand a week plus uh, appearance appearance money, which is which he's turned down, instructed his agent to find another club. That being said, it seems to be, whilst it's not law that you have to do it, um, pretty much every player in the Premier League whose contract is running down has agreed to sign an extension until the end of the season. Because the old contract took us to the end of the season. Now, because of coronavirus, the end of the season has been delayed. So it was basically a gentleman's agreement that you would extend your contract. And it works both ways. So even players that we have no intention of playing whatsoever, like Carlos Sanchez, still gets his an extra couple of months, basically. Uh, and Gakia seems to have turned this down. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I find it very disappointing. Yeah, disappointing man. is the word I would use, actually. I was almost hoping there would be a resolution that um, he would end up signing a new deal with us, to be honest with you. I was, I was a bit hopeful. Maybe he was a bit too optimistic. It probably was. I'm not surprised that he's not signing a new deal. But the fact that he's not remaining an extra month, it, it sort of it leads into either, there's either two things here. Either A, he has got somewhere else to go and therefore he can't. But I'd expect a lot of other players to have done that already. Like it's Players like Ryan Fraser at Bournemouth, who you know, will have a lot of suitors, a lot of clubs after him. Surely he's got something lined up. But yeah, if he's going to remain at Bournemouth, you know, and Gakia could have done the same with West Ham, so that's disappointing. Or B, he's just genuinely that disheartened with the club, if you like, and he's he's got nowhere to go, but he's still going to leave anyway, and he'd rather almost have no wage for a month while he seeks a new club than having a wage and remaining at West Ham beyond... Well, it's, it's an additional month, isn't it? It's four weeks. Um, and that's what's... This throws also a bit of a spanner in the works of David Moyes now because I'm sure Moyes would have been sort of planning to play without him anyway, given everything. But we could have still used him for the first three games. Well, two, because two games are in June. So his contract still covers those first two uh, um, games. So he could have been included in that and then left. But uh, you'd imagine Moyes ain't going to play him at all now when you've got Johnson, Fredericks and Zabaleta that can play right back. But it's just... Oh... I think it's the, it's the big picture that disappoints me more that we've got a youngster who might make it, might not make it, and we're not going to find out. Well, we will, but it just won't be at West Ham. And that's what, that, that's the disappointing thing for me. Yeah, I mean, I, well, as you know, I spoke to Barry Silkman on the phone um, about agents in general, which we're looking to put a video together um, on this channel, just about, we're going to call it the anatomy of a transfer deal. But whilst we, um, and how agents are involved and so on and so forth, because obviously I said some pretty scathing things about agents in general. Uh, so I, I thought it was only right to get their um, uh, their view on it. Whilst we were there, I, I spoke to him about Ngakia and he said to me, he said, well, the thing is, if he has already signed pre-contract, so this is a this is a two two week old conversation Joe something like that isn't it um, he said if he has already signed pre-contract with somebody then he can only work for West Ham up until the, the 30th of June anyway so he's which I, and, and it's only when this it's the first thing I thought oh well, that's interesting because if he has signed pre-contract with somebody then his new contract starts on the 1st of July that would have been signed at the point the time of my conversation this new thing hadn't come into play about the extension of the contract so actually possibly he couldn't Anyway, you're right. He might be able to play an extra couple of games, um, but it, it, it has. It seems like he has decided uh, to leave, what, whatever, for whatever the reason. It is a shame. Um, it's a shame that it's come out like this as well. And you're absolutely right. But this is not an unusual. Si the details an unusual situation, but actually, um, 
the overview is is not um it's not an unusual situation in terms of a football club because many football clubs have to deal with a player who is off joining a new club for instance so you may even get it with on a much bigger scale timo werner looks like he may well have signed a pre-contract with chelsea um do rb uh, play him for the, the remaining games is his heart going to be particularly in it these are all things you have to take into account is he going to is he going to be less committed because he doesn't want to get injured you also have it before world cups with players and so on and so forth so i i do agree that Moyes will not play him um will not play him anymore and uh Look, I, I, I wish I wish him well. I wish him well. I really do. I'm not entirely sure. Be interested to see where he ends up. I'm not entirely sure he's making the right decisions. To be perfectly well, honest, Temple Tower. I'd, I'd be surprised if it's a Premier League club. I think it would probably be a Championship club. But I do think he would be a first team Championship right back. That would have to be his aim, isn't it? Otherwise, it's sort of what's the point of leaving kind of thing. But at the same time, I think he's he certainly get. It's just a. The situation's just blowing up and it's been a very messy affair for the club. Nobody comes out of this looking good. The club comes out of it looking bad. The agent comes out looking bad, but that's nothing new. And the player, unfortunately, comes out looking bad as well. And I do think he's almost a bit of an innocent, not a completely innocent party, but I do think he's sort of almost a lesser of the blame of the three, but it's his name that's going to be the one that's getting slandered the most, if you want. And it's just the way football works, isn't it? You automatically blame the player without looking beyond that but it's the bigger picture that concerns me Gonzo because if I was a youngster whether I'm at West Ham or I'm someone like Nathan Hall and a youngster elsewhere in West Ham are trying to recruit me I'd be thinking well I don't really fancy that to be honest with you because you've now got a player outside looking in you've now got a player that made it into the first team granted he only played four games but he looked decent enough he held his own he asked for a wage rise and you said no and what well, he, well, he did you gave him a offer but that offer got made public the offer was deemed not good enough by the player. And if I was a footballer, I'd be looking at West Ham thinking, I'm not sure I want to go there at this current time. I think Moyes has almost got to repair that damage by, whether it's Dean Garner or Nathan Holland or whatever, by almost giving the youngsters game time in future to say, look, no, we will give you a chance here. West Ham is a good club for youngsters to come through. And I just think it's a bit a step backwards for what should be something fruitful and extremely exciting to see a youngster come through the academy. Yeah, I'm not worried about that to that extent. It's not good PR. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, if they're gonna, they're not going to. If they're going to look at that, they're not going to just look at that um, with the blinkers on and then ignore that Declan Rice has gone. No, but he's not. Yeah, but yeah, but for every Declan Rice, there's a corner commentary. His contract details got leaked. Declan Rice has got leaked. Dean Gannon has got leaked. So this is not the first youngster that's been put under peer pressure by the club. It's the first youngster to possibly. I guess stand up against it and say, "Nah, piss off! You're not holding me. You're not. We're not I'm not playing this game. With you. I'm off." He's the first one that's really thrown it back at the club. The other ones have, you know, Rice ended up developing at such a fast pace that he ended up justifying a larger wage, and the club ended up having to give him one. It's still not a load of money. It's still less than what his first team teammates are on. But you know, Dean Garner, common commentary, and that these youngsters have almost had to. Not accept peer pressure, but it's almost been Gaki is the first one, I think, to almost rip up that contract offer and say, Nah, have it back, see you later. I, I, I think you're putting a cart before the horse there. I don't think I think you look into this too much, and I don't see uh, Dean Garner as an ambassador for players' rights. I don't think that's what's going on here. I, I think Dean Garner just feels he's had a contract that's been that's given too low. I think he's, um, I think the fact, as far as I look at it, and I see a player who's not quite good enough. Um, to command a first team place I think but he's probably asking for a wage that he might have got two years ago that because of two factors and only two factors because of Reese Oxford and because of basically the club is having £30 million less than they did because of coronavirus or £22 million or whatever it is because of the uncertainty we got less money I think he's been offered the opportunity to earn between obviously we know the figures if he does crap about a quarter of a million pounds if he had, if he does well about a million pounds he's been offered that he's he's possibly got a better offer elsewhere i think that's what it is i don't think he is an ambassador for waving the flag for for players being treated more fairly i i, I think and i don't I, that's not wrong by the way for him to look after his own wages i think anyone coming in would probably do the same i think they would just look at their own wages their own situation i'm not sure this puts off west ham puts players off West Ham to that extent I, I really don't I, I almost I do think it's, it's weird because I do think it's entirely possible because I've looked at a little bit of the fallout as well even though it's only been 
whatever half an hour since or whatever an hour since the story broke a little bit of a fallout and and everyone's so black and white now no no pun intended in a recent thing but everybody is there's no gray area there's no nuance and so it's a case it is entirely possible to think that the owners have done a terrible job moving from the stadium to done a terrible job in the pledges the 10 point plan you can you can actually think the owners done a terrible job but just because they have doesn't necessarily mean that Ngaki is a really good player and he's he's gonna you know and, and he's been wronged so to speak I think I, I'm not so sure about this one I, I think he's he's had his eye on leaving for quite a while and I, I it's really whether you think he should have been offered more money I think the money was offered was a was about right and I think if another young player comes in and they're offered what they think is right I think they'll sign because I do think there is a path into the first team at West Ham for young players I, I, I think he should have been offered more I think the the initial offer maybe is fair I do think I think we should gamble more on the youngsters though I, I do think the thing is Ngakio's not even wanting that much he's not even wanting what Reese Oxford's on or, or was on if you like but it's the ghost of Reese Oxford that's haunting every youngster negotiation from now on every time a youngster is due for pay rise the, the Reese Oxford alarm bells are ringing in the owner's ears thinking oh crikey we can't have this situation again but we've still got a fee for Reese Oxford I mean that is a, an extreme example though it's the worst that example is so gone wrong if you like but the other extreme example is Declan Rice and you can't use Declan Rice because it's unfair because it is so extreme and so unique and we probably won't see it again for another decade at least mm. but at the same time I don't think you can constantly use the Reese Oxford stick for every youngster, that happened four years ago. You have to go back four years to find an example of where giving a youngster a reasonable wage has gone wrong. You know, we've given Haksbanovic a bigger wage than what we're offering in Gakia. The guy's played, what, two games for West Ham or something? We've give- Yeah, but we, we, we pay three million for him. That's the thing. He's he's come in. When you pay a transfer fee, you're going to do that. This is someone... I mean, you're right. That's not... And to be fair, he doesn't look like he's, he's much of a player when I've seen him play. But if you pay three million for a player, you're going to have to give him a signing on bonus. And that and, and that was... Well, we don't know what happens when you... No, but it was a gamble. Still, it was a gamble. And it's just not... Well, we don't think it's going to work out. I'd be surprised if we ever saw him play another game for West Ham. But my point is, it was a gamble. And I think it's right to take that gamble on Hax Banovic. I think it's right to take the gamble on Exonde Silva, I bet you he's on a lot more than what um, Ngaki was offered or was demanding. Yet, when you look at what they contributed to the club over the last season, one's contributed a lot and one's con- con- contributed nothing. Through no fault of his own, he had a serious illness. But my point is, he, Ngaki has contributed. He's sort of stepping up into that first team. And I just think I'd rather see us gamble with the youngsters and say, listen, we're going to give you your 10, 15 grand a week. We're going to give you that. You've got a season, and if it don't work out, we will hopefully get half a million for you, and that half a million pays for his wage increase. Um, this club's been far more wasteful with money in numerous transfers. You know, we'd be, how much do we pay our below to, to do, literally do nothing at the club? Um, all this, I just think we've now got this guy who. It, and I would do it with every youngster that breaks into the first team, even after a handful of games, if he's holding his own, say, you know something, we're going to put our arm around you, we're going to give you your wage and if you don't work out we will sell you for a little bit of money it won't be lots marcus brown went tits up he went tits up but we still got what was it quarter of a million it's not much yeah about 250 it's not much but we would pay for most his wages and by before he left he was out on loan all this time we wouldn't have been paying 100 percent of his wages anyway and i just think it's almost not risk free but i think it's a very small financial risk to take punts on your youngsters after they've made i'm not saying you give them all this money once they've come into the first team they're training with the first team regularly they're holding their own in training they've had a bit of game time I just think I'd just like to see us be the club in the Premier League that says to youngsters come to West Ham because you're going to get paid and you're going to get a chance in the team because footballers care about money now it, it might not be right you'd have to agree with them you can call them money grabbers whatever but it's, it's a fact of life footballers want they want the wrong guy. There's two things that would attract a youngster to West Ham, in my opinion. Game time, which I think they'll get. I do think there's a path into the first team. I think Moyes is the right manager for that as well. Even though I'm not convinced by him long term, I do think Moyes will give a youngster an opportunity. He's showing it. Um, but the second thing is money. And at the minute, I feel we're sort of at a, a stumbling block, if you like, with that part of it. And there will be players, good players out there, that prefer money to game time short term anyway. Whether it's right or not. Yeah, I would agree with everything you said. 
six months ago. But I think now Middlesbrough haven't got a quarter of a million to pay for Marcus Brown. And I think that example can be transferred to every club in the championship. We won't see the championship have had their loans. The championship are going to have to pay those back soon enough. We're going to see massive, massive problems in the lower leagues. I don't think you're going to have a situation where lower leagues can come in and pay half a million pounds, million pounds for a player that's not really working out for you at any point. So I do think you're lumbered with whatever wage you give. I, I just think wages are going to go for clubs like West Ham anyway. I think wages are going to go down. I think we've seen with Chelsea and with Man United what Man United want to do. Even As I understand it, even Liverpool have felt the pinch a little bit so they couldn't push the Werner um, deal through. So I certainly think championship clubs are going to not be offering that money. I think our wages are going to be less. I, th- I think you're right. We've been wasteful. Carlos Sanchez, the Gok and Torre loan, Arbeloa, as you said, we have been completely wasteful with that money. But I do think times have changed now. And I don't think we're going to be in a position to offer those sort of contracts anymore. I think if the club feel look, look the club would have spoken to David Moyes I don't know this I don't know this at all but they've definitely spoken to David Moyes they would have probably said to David Moyes how much do you want this kid Moyes, Moyes he might have said this is what I think probably happens look we've got Ryan Fredericks possibly Ben Johnson's ahead of him and I want to bring in a right back so this guy is is going to be third or fourth choice I, I think that is that's I really believe that to be true we're looking at our third or fourth choice right back here and I think at that point the club probably thought okay economic uncertainty we'll give him five grand a week with appearances if he does get into the first team we'll pay him more anything else is a little bit rich for us and as i say whilst I, i've been as scathing as anyone about the owners you know this about the move about everything else on that one i make them a little bit right on that to be fair i, I and why i'm more disappointed with I'm disappointed that the context. I've, I've, had, I've a Jeremy Ory's agent of not unless they've signed if they've signed a pre-contract elsewhere, he can't play. I get it. If he hasn't, just for the agent or Jeremy himself to say, look, there's a bit of an awkward situation here. The times have changed. Let's not be seen to be <laughs> refusing to play from now until the end of the season. Let's play, make ourselves available, even if we don't play, then we move. But to actually say. But then, but then, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing it out till the end of the season. But then he's in the Lyle Taylor thing. Have you have you seen the Lyle Taylor stuff in the last few days? No, the Charlton striker. He's their top. He's their best player. Oh yeah, Lee yeah. Murray was and he, about he's it. refusing Sorry, to yes. play. He's refusing to come back because yes, he's, yes, he's yes. out of contract in the summer. Essentially, he wants his big move. Mm. And he basically, said, I'm not coming back because I might get injured. And if I get injured, that's it. He said, I'm at a stage in my career. I've got one shot at this, and I am not willing to risk it. Because I may get injured again, and I think that would always be the Ngaki thing. Because let's just say he did get injured in the next month, then what? What's he going to do? West was down with withdrawing that contract offer. He's got no club to go to. He's out for numerous months or something. In as you've said, an uncertain time anyway. He's going to have no future. Yep. Um, he's almost got to look after himself. It is disappointing. Um, and I don't make him right. But I can understand his point of view. I don't necessarily agree with it, but you have to. I think you almost have to take the clan and blue specs off for that a little bit and look at put your Ngakia ones on and say what's best for the player and the, and the best thing is to remain fit so that you're then extremely attractive mm. to other clubs, aren't you? You're, well, you're not free. If you go to an English club, they're going to have to pay a bit of compensation to West Ham. But hypoth- in theory, you, you don't cost much. You're a low risk. Um yeah. Well, but both things are true, Gia. That, and, and that's what I mean. It's not There is a grey area. He is He is right to look after himself uh, and do you know what I mean and to put himself before West Ham I am right as a West Ham fan to be disappointed by that and um, but I understand why he's got to look after himself of course but uh, but yeah you know it's, I, it's, it's a sh- I, I find it a bit of a shame I was I, I, I was hopeful he might you know, he would stick around for a little bit and, and maybe at one point grow into the team or you know or, or whatever it, it's it's not happened um this this just ain't a great way for it to happen. I thought he was off anyway. This story coming out now doesn't help anyone. I've got to say this doesn't. No, it's it's, it's a dumb story. Well, it's, 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 it's there. The story. So I don't blame the Guardian for running it. But um, the the it, uh, so much of this. It, even if he wasn't going to play, it didn't have to come out of his refusal to play. You know, he could have gone through the motions in training. He could have seen out the last month. He could have given it fifty percent, or, or whatever the case may be, and and then just there would never have been this thing about him refusing to play for the last part of the season for West Ham, which will be the narrative. Now. I don't necessarily think it's word. It shouldn't be worded like that, though. I think it should be worded. It's, it's quite simple. 
player is leaving at the end of his contract. That's how I would like to. That's how I would word it anyway. He, refusing to play well, that would we'll find out if David Moyes wished to use him against Wolves or whatever, even just on the bench, and he's not not there, and then we'll know he's refusing to play. But um, given that he's been back in training and such like, I'm not sure he is, because surely he wouldn't even go back to training if he was refusing to play, would he? Um, so the way I see it is a player's contract's coming to an end, and he's not extending it for whatever reason, whether it's a new club, he wants to stay fit. Um, because as we know the wages he's going to miss out on when he leaves West Ham it's not much like we said it's a few hundred quid a month isn't it um, so yep. it's not he's not he's not missing out on thousands well it will be it'll be a few grand but it's not going to yeah, yeah. he's not missing out on 30, 40 grand it's much easier to sign an extension for like a Carlos Sanchez it's much easier for him to say yeah alright I'll stay for another month when you're going to get a quarter <laughs> yeah, of a yeah. million pounds to do it yeah, yeah, than yeah, it yeah. is to say to Jeremy Gakia do you want to stay we're going to give you an extra 800 pounds it's very much it's probably a bit harder for Gakia to stomach that than it is for Sanchez um, and also Sanchez knows he's not going to get played he's got no risk because he's got nowhere to go assumingly he may, he... oh it's a lovely deal it's a yeah, lovely deal it's just... yeah. so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, the, the circumstances are different so I can kind of understand the whole th- I just think the whole thing is so disappointing from all aspects the way the clubs handled it the way the agents handled it the fact that we have someone who might make it. I'm very 50 50 on if Ngaki would have made it or not. Yeah. I'm very, I think there was something there and I was looking forward to finding out. And I was quite perhaps laid back about getting a right back this summer, given that we then have Fredericks, Johnson, and Ngaki. I thought sure. you only need one sure. of the three of them to be on form and you're all right. Yeah. Um, but now you don't, even if you take Ngaki out, you've got Johnson and Fredericks. I'm not that confident we don't need a right back anymore because. Ben Johnson's proven to be a little bit injury prone this last season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not convinced Fredericks is good enough to be a first choice right back in the Premier League. So I do think we need a right back, and they're not cheap. They're just not cheap. You know that guy we were linked with in Argentina is 10 million or something. So mm. expensive. Anyway, what's your final words on this? We'll wrap this up. Uh, my, my final words: I do think we've got to take into account that Ngakia is very young. All right. He's very young. So I do think um, proportionately other people probably need to take a bit more of the blame than he does, right? Because how old is he? 19. I mean, I was doing doing some stuff at 19. I can tell you. Um, With every decision I made at 19, I'd I'd probably look back now and shake my head. That's why it's so important that your advice is, is correct. And in terms of players, it's going to be your parents, support group, family, whatever it is. And your agents, and I do feel that people need to not not everyone's Declan Rice. All right, I looked at the Declan Rice situation, Geo, where he was Declan Rice was prepared, prepared to piss off a country right? <laughs> to get what he wanted. He knew he knew that when that when he chose England over Ireland, people were not going to be happy. But you look at Declan, and, and he is a strong man. He's got broad shoulders, and you thought actually he is tough enough to take this. Um, so I, I think his family, I, I don't think his family uh, were wrong in how they persuaded. I don't think his, his agent was necessarily wrong. I think everybody knew that Declan could take it, all right? I just hope that the support group around Agakia have made the right decision. Now, I don't know him. I don't know, I don't know you know, but it's really, really important that when someone's that young, that they're guided to make the right decisions. And I'm not saying, I don't want people coming in and say, oh, you would say that, you know, at West Ham, you know, you you wouldn't, you wouldn't would think West Ham, he should sign a five-year contract. Not necessarily, I'm not convinced he'll make it, Gio. I, I'm, I am talking about him as a young man trying to get through life with as little grief as possible and the best deal. You know what? And so as hopefully Jeremy Agakia, at the age of 27, 28, is still a professional footballer, earning, earning money and making a good career for himself. That, that's that's my fault. Yeah, mine, mine is I'm just disappointed in the whole situation, the way it's been handled initially. You know, the stuff getting leaked, I thought that was bad. Of as you know, I didn't like that. I thought that was bad. I thought that spoke more about how the club were handling. It. I thought the, the first part of the news, you know, he's not signing a new deal. I thought that's fine. It's a club control the narrative, which is in Gaki unfortunately signing a new. Then it just got a bit dirty there, and then there was a lot of anger in among the fan base, and I thought it done what it was entirely was attempted to do which was turn the fans against Ngaki a little bit and it, but then I thought the second article sort of backfired a bit and everybody then turned against the board 
And the whole thing's just been messy from the word go. I'd like to have seen this handled in such a way which is Higaki won't sign a new deal. We wish him the best of luck. We hope he has a really good future. We hope to see him back at West Ham at some point in the future. Blah, blah, blah. All that sort of sound bites. If you like. Even if you don't mean it, just it, just end the, the relationship on a positive note. Because he's been here for quite a while. He's been at West Ham for a good few years now. Since he was 12 or 14 years of age or something. He isn't just coming like, you know, Holland came when he was 16. And he might leave when he's 19 kind of thing. Um... He's been here for a few years. I'd like to have seen almost a respectful handshake between the two parties, but here we are. I mean, yes, I know we're not contributing to do videos, but I like to think I like to think I've defended Ngakia's corner a little bit over the last few. I mean, I tried to get, I actually tried to get a little interview with Ngakia's agent to set this, the story back because I do believe there's two sides to every story, and I found out a little bit about the Ngakia side, which didn't add up to what was coming from the club. Um, to be fair, Ngakia's agent didn't necessarily say no. He just said not yet <laughs> so it might come hopefully but i found out some things which put stuff in a different perspective um but I'm, i'll try i'm gonna message him again see if i can get again to come on um but he's he's it's just disappointing going so i'm really disappointed that we're not going to see him i was excited to see if he would make it or not just like i was excited to see dean Ghana, cullen connor coventry i'm excited to see if nathan holland makes it will they i don't know but I want to find out at West Ham. I don't want to discover it with them playing it at a different club. I want to see it at our club. Oh, mate. Oh, listen, listen. if he starts... If he ends up as Liverpool, Real Madrid's right back, we're going to look very, very silly. There's no doubt about it. Just finally, on just what you said um, about, you know, the club saying we wish him all the best and, you know, he's refused to sign a new contract, wish him all the best for the future. I actually, what you said there, I think is a better negotiating tactic yeah. as well. Because I think that makes Guilt. the player, you know, I, I think at that point you say you, it's almost like the final offer. He's like, all right, you know what? Fair enough. Uh, wish you all the best. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I think you then go back to your agent. Oh, crikey. Um, that is the final offer. We're, we've we got to leave. Where, where am I going? My, my future's uncertain. I wonder if that point you go back and say, oh, is there a little bit of wriggle room? Um, yeah. 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 A, a, a classier and, and smarter way to, a smarter to do it. Way. I like that phrase. That's, that sums up the whole video, I think. A smarter way to do it could be done anyway if you enjoyed this video drop a like on it subscribe new and here leave your comments in the video below we've been reading the comments recently let's keep them coming and do check out um sat's video on the forum channel from today it'll be on your screen in just a second have a little click have a little listen have a little watch and me and gonzo will catch you in a bit goodbye gonzo